Welcome to the protein pyramid. Famous pyramids include this, this, and now this, probably. Thank you for watching the last video, you kind and very funny people. I greatly appreciate it. I have information on protein intake for muscle growth scattered all over this channel. And I have arranged my videos into playlists on the homepage in order to help you to navigate your way through the information. But I wanted to make a one-stop protein video shop, if you like, to explain what protein to intake, why you intake protein, when you intake, how much, everything encapsulated in one digestible video. This video is basically Walmart and it will be structured in terms of a pyramid, a hierarchy of importance. The most important factors for your protein intake coming down to the lesser important factors. You could call this video a complete protein, unlike a BCAA. Of course, protein intake is vital for muscle growth, for protein synthesis, this anabolic process of chaining together amino acids, which can result in increased muscle mass. An important caveat, of course, for athletes and sports people, protein intake will be more intricate because their eating and their training has to peak for specific times, for specific compositions, etc. And so if you like, you can think of my video as information for the regular fitness enthusiast who's looking to build muscle. However, one issue in the illusion industry is the lesser important issues are projected to you as the most important issues. And why is this? Because it helps disingenuous people to sell their products to you. I have made many videos on the intra-workout supplement and the post-workout anabolic window, for example, which encapsulates this beginner trap. And so that is why I want to project this pyramid to you so it can help you to make these decisions. But again, as with every video, I'm not giving you the absolute protocol that everyone watching this must follow. The pyramid is a base layer structure for you to base your decisions from, but you have unique characteristics and needs. And so of course, you're gonna to have to adapt the information to fit your needs. And so the most important protein factor for muscle growth is the amount of protein you intake over a day. And then the quality of that protein intake goes hand in hand. The intake of all nine essential amino acids through the food that you're eating, meth, eonine is my favorite one. And when you're thinking about intaking quality protein, all nine essential amino acids, this doesn't have to be from one piece of food. You can achieve this through a mixture of foods, for example, rice and beans. And so in terms of the exact food types that you're gonna take in to get your nine essential amino acids, that's not for me to tell you because I understand that people watching this will have different eating protocols they follow. As of course, there is variability in health and fitness. Some of you may get the essential amino acids through chicken. There may be some of you who are vegetarian and you might, for example, take in lentils and brown rice to get your essential amino acids. But then when we think about different eating protocols and taking in the essential amino acids. We can then think that different food types may have less overall protein than others. So that leads to the important question of how much protein should you intake per day for muscle growth? And so a vital point to start here is that there is no consensus for the exact amount of protein intake for muscle growth. However, what we do have is a range of figures based on some very good evidence. And so that's what I'm gonna to project to you. And so this amount can be expressed in different ways. Some people express the amount of protein grams in comparison to total body weight. Some people express the protein grams you intake in comparison to lean body mass, fat-free mass. And then some people will give you huge numbers like you need to take two grams per pound of your body weight because they're lying to you and misleading you because it feels impossible for you to reach those huge numbers and therefore you feel that you must buy their protein supplement to try and hit those huge numbers. And so Aragon and Schoenfeld have this paper where they comb through research into protein intake and they project the findings that 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram to 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of total body weight is the range of protein needed for muscle growth. You have a lower end range and an upper end range, which they've come to based on combing through the literature, the research, the body of evidence into these issues. And this included looking at 40 references, including them looking into a meta-analysis. Protein intake for the goal of maximizing resistance training, induced gains in muscle mass and strength is approximately 1.6 grams per kilogram, at least in non-dieting 
conditions. However, 1.6 grams per kilogram per day should not be viewed as an ironclad or universal limit beyond which protein intake will be either wasted or used for physiological demands aside from muscle growth. A recent meta-analysis on protein supplementation involving resistance trainees reported an upper 95% confidence interval of 2.2 grams per kilogram per day. And so when it comes to the exact amount of protein you intake, of course, there's a level of personal preference there, depending on your specific needs. And that is why a range is the best way to present this. And then we have Eric Helms, who has much research into protein. And he was part of this systematic review in 2017, a high quality level of evidence. It is an open access research paper so you can go and read that and it's available for the very best price of free. This is the largest meta-analysis on interventions including dietary protein supplementation with muscle and strength related outcomes during prolonged resistance exercise training to date. It looked into 49 studies involving 1,863 participants and of course with much nuanced discussion throughout the paper. However, they come to the communication of 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of total body mass to a discussed 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of total body mass. However, with this important caveat, with protein supplementation, protein intakes at amounts greater than 1.6 grams per kilogram per day do not further contribute resistance training induced gains in fat-free mass. And so there is a factor to consider there, the point of diminishing returns. An ethical way to present the amount of protein you intake is through a range, but you have to be mindful that just taking in more and more protein does not necessarily that you're gonna have the potential to build more and more muscle mass. Indeed, just taking in a doable amount each day, in addition to your challenging resistance training, is sufficient. Protein supplementation is sufficient at 1.6 grams per kilograms per day in healthy adults during resistance training. But of course, some of you may take in a bit more depending on your specific needs. Some of you may take in a bit less depending on your specific needs. But that figure of 1.6 is most certainly a good base layer number that you can branch out from. And so the second most important protein factor for muscle growth is protein frequency. How many times you're intaking your protein throughout a day? The middle level of my badly drawn pyramid. Again, we can look to the literature where Aragon and Schoenfeld make this recommendation. It is therefore a relatively simple and elegant solution to consume protein at a target intake of 0.4 grams per kilogram per meal across a minimum of four meals in order to reach a minimum of 1.6 grams per kilogram per day. And so when we think about protein frequency, when we intake amino acids, that can have catabolic stimulus, but of course, anabolic stimulus. Catabolism follows anabolism, but the frequent uptake of amino acids most certainly is a strong stimulus for creating a state of net anabolism over a day. But again, I'm careful how I project this because I understand that people watching this will have different eating protocols. Not everyone watching this is going to eat four meals per day. Some people may eat less, some people may eat more. But again, what I'm doing is projecting a state from researchers who've looked into the body of evidence as a starting point guideline, if you will. The idea of uptaking regular amino acids through the day is most certainly supported by an evidence base for muscle growth. And that is why I presented this video as a pyramid, because don't panic if you cannot intake many regular meals over a day. You need to refer back to the most important layer of the pyramid, which is the total amount of protein you intake over a day. Now to the least important protein factor for muscle growth, the timing of your protein intake around your training. As Helm states, timing is extremely low on the totem pole of importance and certainly much less important than meeting your daily protein intake. And so I have videos on the anabolic window. There is no strict time compulsory anabolic window post-workout where if you do not intake protein, your session is wasted. For example, that imaginary 30 minute countdown timer, for example. Again, that is a tool that fitness shysters have promoted in order to sell their supplements. However, of course, with every concept, there's nuance. So if you are fasted pre-workout, the need to take in protein post-workout increases. If you've had a pre-workout meal, the need to take in protein post-workout diminishes. And again, I have a more detailed video on that where I go through the research. However, of course you can eat post-workout. Again, it's personal preference. If you choose to eat post-workout, it depends on you. You may be hungry. You may just like to eat post-workout. It may be a good accessible time for you to eat. 
I, for example, do eat post-workout because I get hungry. That's a routine I like for adherence also. But if you are going to eat protein post-workout, do it for the right reasons. For those reasons I've just stated. For example, you may be hungry. Maybe it's one of those meals that helps you hit those frequent meals throughout the day. But don't do it for the wrong reasons. But when it comes to eating around training, of course you can do that. But it is the least important protein factor, meaning that if you're eating around your training, but you are not getting in an adequate amount of total protein over the day, then that is not effective for muscle growth. And so you have to understand it of the order of importance. And so as a conclusion, when it comes to protein intake, there's a huge amount of personal preference and meeting your specific eating protocol that will be unique to you. However, this hierarchy of importance, this pyramid is a very solid correct guideline for you to then branch out in and to adapt to your personal needs. I'm James Linker. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.